Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat episode 426. I'm your host, Zach Ryan, and I'm joined today by Tom Tater Tots Marks. Hello. Casey, a slice of pizza de Fritas. Delicious. And Brian, spaghetti. How did I not get the slice of pizza? This is ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to admit that. I demand a, a recap. That's a little bit racist on my part to call you just big spaghetti. I'm <laughs> pizza would have been racist, but also still true. And delicious for that matter. Guys, we are IGN's Nintendo show right here every Thursday at 3 p.m., but time out. A bit of news for you. Um, we've been having a good time up here doing a live show every Thursday, but as we move into uh, review season, uh, they're getting stretched a little thin to put on a live show every week. And we've had a kind of a fun experiment seeing how this live format is going. But um, as of right now, we're going to shelve it and kind of go back to our usual VOD sort of setup. So that means that we will be on uh, IGN.com every Thursday, but not live at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to experiment with maybe jumping in comments and stuff a little earlier. And then we'll also be uh, Fridays on YouTube as we have been for the last couple of months so i'll uh, add i do urge all of you to still pretend we are live mm -hmm. and watch it with the same excitement and energy that you've given us for months now yes. and also to leave comments that we pretend we'll pretend to see well i, I actually do read the comments so same. yeah I, <laughs> during, like, during the show not during well i can't but zach does I, uh, occasionally i do take a look at the comments during the show just like i'm doing right now on this live show while the page loads. You're looking and, up a recipe for grilled cheese. And weird. grilled cheese doesn't have a recipe. It's literally it does if you don't know how to make it. Uh, here's, here's, a, here's a live comment from our chat right now. Pair of IGN says, I'll come by later to say hi. Cheers. Enjoy the show. Now, <laughs> right. let's take over under bets. Who thinks that Pear actually shows up on the show I later I think he shows today? up. He's going to show up at the very end and talk about a brand new game coming to Switch exclusively Except streaming. Except it's only cloud. Yeah, I bet. yeah it's cloud-based <laughs> in Japan. I bet two of Dan's quarters that he okay. will do that. Two wow. of Dan's quarters. Yes. All right. Dan Stapleton. Dan Stapleton, our reviews editor, just got just a big old cup of quarters that he likes to keep on his desk. Guys, none of this is about Nintendo. Let's talk about Nintendo. Let's get about Nintendo. snacks. Now, these days... One of the most popular Nintendo systems is the Nintendo Switch. I've heard. Yeah. It's a handheld and a home console. Uh, you might know this Switch uh, system from you playing it probably right now. It's a very good system. It's got a lot of good games on it. But there are some things that we wanted to talk about with the Switch. We reviewed the Switch when it came out back in March of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we gave it a 7 yep. point. I think just 7. 7? Yeah. 7.0? 7 7 uh, I probably should have done some research on that. But... We are re-reviewing the Switch, and we've invited my friend Tom Marks on to talk a little bit about that whole process. Now, before we get into it, I did want to talk about the way that we do re-reviews. There have been some games that we've re-reviewed. Rainbow yeah. Six Siege comes to mind. Uh, Destiny League. comes to mind. Rocket League. Um, games that uh, that have are built around iteration, games that have shown significant improvement over the course of, you know, X amount of months and years since release. Uh, Splatoon specifically for our fans have, have seen that. That's happen. true. That's right. We did do an original yeah. uh, Splatoon uh, re-review, but is this the first time we re-reviewed a console? I'm not sure long term. It's at least the first time in a while, mm -hmm. if anything. it's We haven't reviewed re-reviewed any of the other consoles this generation at the very least right mm -hmm. so i did want to talk a little bit before we get into the whole process of uh or uh, talking about the sp switch specifically uh why re-review a console like what's the philosophy behind reapproaching a review you know 18 months down the line yeah this is something dan stapled in our reviews editor and tina amini our head of games can we we talked a lot about this and th the fundamental fact of it and the reason we would do it is because it, the original review is no longer relevant, right? Mm. That's the reason you would re-review a game, too. Mm. Something has changed. Things have changed a lot. A game has changed a lot, and it's no longer representative of what somebody buying that thing today would be. Right. And it's the reason a lot of the times you don't see re-reviews or usually don't see re-reviews of big single-player games because those games haven't changed significantly and mm -hmm. people probably aren't buying them in mass in the way that like Rainbow Six Siege is still pushing itself a lot. Uh, or the Switch is still an incredibly popular system. Yeah. So we did an updated review, or not updated, but just new review, because we wanted to give a review of what this thing is like right now. If you're going to go out and buy it right now, here's what you're going to get. Right. This is the most relevant way to, to learn about that. Which is interesting, because I don't think people really associate the Switch as a console that has maybe really significantly changed since launch, right? Right. There's a couple bells and whistles have been added, but for the most part, it's effectively remained true to what its original vision was, which was was this console handheld hybrid that had a very light, very sort of minimalist OS. It is not bogged down with apps and services and all sorts of things like that. But some things have changed over time, right? Like the online service, some of yeah. the, the launch hiccups, like Joy-Cons fritzing out and stuff like that. 
I, I think that uh, the online service is probably the biggest. Uh, what's the right word? Instigator sounds too mean. It's yeah. like it's kind of the the spark beyond yeah, behind the the re review idea or the updated review idea. Um, this time around, at least the inspiration. The in, there we go. Thank yeah. you. Instigator is such a negative thing, and <laughs> it's just like no, no, no. Uh, yeah. The other thing though is that unlike, I mean, the the PS4, Xbox One has this a little bit. Any console has this a little bit, but. The Switch being a handheld device, it's something you're using a lot, it's something you're moving around a lot, and there have been a lot of little things that have cropped up over in the last year and a half right. that you kind of don't really deal with when you're just using a PS4. Like, sure, if the PS4 controller had some catastrophic thing that daily use sort of sussed out... It did. Yeah, that's did true. Well, yeah, the, the, Well, the analog, jo- analog joysticks showed deterioration almost immediately. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's something that's kind of been... And the, the, I think the later controllers didn't have that, or yeah. they updated it a yep. little bit, right? Uh, the Switch, you're, we have seen a lot of little issues, right? We've seen stuff like uh, a semi-common problem of batteries expanding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. cracking the backs of the, the casing, and that's like luckily just a cosmetic issue. Which was causing the warping issue. Yeah, it was causing right? warping. Yeah. It was little things like that. Well, could that cause the Switch to not be able to be docked? I don't think we've had... I, I haven't seen any indication from anybody that's had this happen to them, that it's been anything more than a cosmetic problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe it affects battery life too, but not enough that they are complaining about that. But I think it's signaling of like, if you're looking at your Switch and you see that your battery is expanding to the point that it's cracking your your actual casing, it's you're going to send that in before there's an opportunity for it to really like bust up and damage right. it. Like right. explode. So like, who's to say, exactly, <laughs> like who's to say that those those battery packs wouldn't cause more damage mm-hmm. if they weren't sent in that, hey, there's Karen, my friend Karen. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> who's to say that they wouldn't cause more damage in the long run, you know, right. it might be a question of people just being coming aware of this and then taking care of it early on. Yeah. So. Also, you know, at the launch of the system, if you lost your saves, you lost your saves, or really leading up until last yeah. week, and now with cloud saves circumventing that for most games, um, mm-hmm. that's that's a step in the right direction, right? No, yeah, I think cloud saves is another really big thing. It's funny with the online service too because it's so good that it's finally here and we finally know exactly what it's going to look like. We have our hands on it, but also it didn't, it didn't functionally change too much about the Switch. Right. That online service clicking on was just sort of, like, I went and played Splatoon and I went and played uh, Mario Kart to test out the online. And yeah. And it just works as well as it did. Well, I'm one of those people that gets really excited when new system updates are out for my consoles, right? Yeah. And like, you know, 6.0 just hit on PS4. Nothing really happened there. But a few weeks before that, they overhauled the entire search engine and stuff. If you go back to something like the, the Xbox 360, which launched with that sort of Blades interface mm-hmm. and then ultimately phased that out... Um, um, that's not really the kind of stuff we're seeing with Switch, right? Mm-hmm. It is effectively still the same look and feel of the system, mm-hmm. um, although some things have changed a little bit. I noticed in one of the drafts of your review, I don't know what you finally landed on, but I read it a few days ago. You just said giraffes, giraffes. of your review. Yeah. Giraffes. giraffes of the review. <laughs> yeah, let's review giraffes. I think 10 out of 10 for tall horses. <laughs> um, you mentioned something about how this is a system that ultimately has lived up to what the sort of advertising uh, yeah. represented to begin with. You're like, all of these situations where it showed us doing these things that we were like, we'll never do that. We, we did all that. With the exception of a rooftop party, I will say. False. You think I've actually heard accounts of rooftop parties. Really? With the Switch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you think that maybe you don't know enough people who have roofs and are your friend? Nobody wants to party be. on a rooftop in San Francisco. It's too cold. And I'm not going to lie. Too this foggy, this so. could be a me problem. This could be a San Francisco problem. It yeah. could not a problem with the Switch. But yeah, it, it really has. I think that was one of the things that I was super, not skeptical of, but wary of when the Switch was first right. getting marketed was oh, you're going to be able to take this everywhere. And then we were also hearing like three-hour battery life. And that so conflicted in my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now that I've been using it a year and a half, the battery life doesn't seem like any sort of problem to me, mm-hmm. no. except for long plane rides. But yeah. then you just sort of plug it in. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, even have... then, like, like you carry a, a charging brick, which I would take yep. anyway to charge my phone, and it's mm-hmm. a non-issue. So. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I do feel like we're kind of burying the lead here. Uh, we gave the initial review of the Switch of 7.0. Have we talked about your score? No, not yet. Okay. What is it? So tell us what, what now that we've re-reviewed the Switch, now that we're a year and a half in, what's the score? Are we breaking embargo? Has no. your review, your review <laughs> no. isn't up yet. No, that is. is, Dan, it is. Okay, I was going to say, is live. Dan Staple going to charge in here and be like, oh, I told you guys. <laughs> By the way, this is make it or break it for me on deciding whether or not to buy a Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know a lot of you guys listening right now are very wary. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I gave it an 8.3. All right. And the reason I gave it an 8.3 is it is, it's Absolutely one of my favorite consoles. I love it. I think it's a great, great gaming system. I think it has a lot of little problems, like we just discussed. I think, and I also think that it is 
not much more than a gaming system yeah. is one of the things. It's mm -hmm. not, and and this is this is sort of the thing where, and I mentioned this explicitly in my review, um, which you can check out on IGN.com. You can read the whole thing, watch the video. Uh, I'm very happy with how it came out. It's been the last week of my life, basically, and the last year and a half of my life, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But uh, it not having things like an internet browser mm -hmm. or Netflix right. or a way to customize the icons on your home screen or Bluetooth support, Bluetooth support or home or screen. headphone jack when it's docked. Yeah, headphone jack when it's docked. <laughs> yeah. Any of that stuff. That's my biggest complaint. <laughs> that doesn't make the experience of playing one of the best games to come out in the last decade, Breath of the Wild, on a train mm -hmm. any worse. Mm -hmm. right. That experience is still absolutely incredible to me, mm -hmm. but it does make it a little bit less than when compared to other systems. Sure. Um, and I think that was my biggest takeaway of it, was that this is just a fantastic device that just has like all these little things that sort of keep it from really being amazing to me. You just reviewed Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, this is a Nintendo podcast. You're pointing out a lot of the Switch's flaws and giving it an 8.3, so we are going to have to ask you to leave, but uh, it's been cool having you on. 8.3 <laughs> is still great I mean, on no, IGN great. scale. Yeah, it's still, and I still think it is a great system, but part of the other thing is, and I've caught myself doing that with the review, where I was focusing in on a lot of the negative things, mm -hmm. And I think it's because it's it's what you do with things you love, right? Right. When you really, really love something, you try to think, and you are reviewing it, you try to think really critically about it, and you try to think, okay, I know I like this. I know a lot of people out there like this, so what what are its problems? What are its faults? Because you don't want to just spend 3,000 words talking about how great Zelda is. Of course. And I'm not, I'm not like an expert reviewer. I've written a few reviews for IGN, but I think one of the things that that I often think about when writing a review is if I'm giving a, a game or, a, you know, I've never reviewed a console, but if I'm giving something a score, I need to justify why I've given it the score that I've given it for the good reasons, but I also need to justify what the detractions are and yeah. the, where those those problems lie and really identify that for people that are like, hey, these are the things that might not work for me, mm -hmm. but overall, this is what the score I want to give it because of these things that did work for me. So yeah. Right, and I think that's like, I don't know, my mantra with reviews and reading reviews has always been like, this is not starting with 100 and then knocking off points until you get to where you want. <laughs> and I it's think not, that's a common not, misconception. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, It's not ice sculpting, basically, right? Where you start with this block and you whittle it down until you have what you want. It is judging a product or a game or a service based on how well it is accomplishing what it is attempting to accomplish, right? right? And for the Nintendo Switch, it's doing, it's, it's living up to the hype of all mm -hmm. of the things it's promising to do. But then when you sit down and there's warping issues or you can't right. plug in your headphones or the Bluetooth support and blah, 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 you start to, start to knock points off here and there. So. And, yeah. This might be reductive, Naomi. Uh, this might be reductive, but uh, the way that I think about reviewing is like we have a scale here at IGN mm -hmm. that is uh, ten is a masterpiece, uh, nine is amazing, eight is great, seven is good, six is okay, five is bad. Uh, I mediocre, mediocre, and then four, gets four is bad. bad, and then three, two, one, right? Three, um, two, one. You don't need to worry. One about. is right. the poop and emoji. That's right. Just, <laughs> just the turd emoji. Um, but I think it's important to listen to the conversation that you're having when you're talking about the game, right? If you're out there telling people like, oh, I had a really great time with this game. I think it's a great game. That makes it a lot easier to me to be like, okay, great. That means that I'm going to put it in an eight range. Yep. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying like, this is a really good game, that means that it's probably a 7.5 mm -hmm. and higher. Like, those are the kinds of things that you have to take it kind of with a grain of salt when you're doing reviews. Yeah. Yep. Because that is, that is a reductive way to look at it. But I do feel like the Switch is a great system. I wouldn't call it amazing. And I don't think it's a masterpiece of a system. I think it's great. But you're right to point out the flaws that it does have. Yep. And and the other weird thing, because this is the first time I've ever reviewed a piece of hardware besides like some keyboards. Mm -hmm. And like very rarely did I do that. Uh, and it's strange to be, have to judge a review or judge a system on its entire library and also the things that are missing from its library and also the things that are coming to okay. its right. library. So that's right. an interesting point, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but while no, we're please. on this train of thought, I, I did want to ask what the differentiation between reviewing, like do you, do you take the library into account? You must, right? When yeah. when you're talking oh, about yeah. the switch, mm -hmm. um, or is it strictly like user interface and hardware and things like that? Like, yeah, the breath, bre <laughs> the breath of the wild. You could call breath it that. Breath of the wild is a banger, right? Yeah. Like, it's one of the most perfect and and uh, like amazing games that I've played in the last decade. Like you it, said, it needs, it needs temples. <laughs> but to me, <laughs> it's like fair. It's got a, yeah, it does need temple, but it, you got to have more than that. Like right. Super Mario Odyssey is great too, but it, like that's too okay. So let's talk about where the, the software really factors into how you score the system. Well, it was also one of those things where pre-launch, 
we were all really concerned, or at least I was really concerned about the Switch's library. I thought it was, everyone was talking, right, like, what are its launch games? It's like, it's yeah. got Zelda, and Zelda is also on Wii U. Why, well, what else does it have? For, well, mm-hmm. fortunately for us, Zelda is a game that is maybe the best launch game of all time. Yeah, no, and, <laughs> right. and straight up. Yeah. It was yeah. a game that, like, get a Wii on launch. Yeah. yeah. And as soon as we started playing it, I felt like I don't need any other games for a while. Like, I don't need anything besides well, Zelda yeah. for at least, you know, X and amount of months. I think, I think when you're telling somebody to buy a console or to get a console, you're talking to a friend. Um, one of the things that you are sort of harping on is how much of this investment is going to continue to bring this person joy? Whereas like at the launch of the Wii U, we were like, okay, there's problems here, but it's got this coming, this coming, this coming. Um, and then if you had asked me again two years into the console's life cycle, I would have been like, this is not a good investment right now. Like mm-hmm. I, enjoy, I love the Wii U. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. played. A, I, I I actually really liked the Wii U. I me l- too. Loved all the features. Like I loved being able to like play and watch a movie while someone else was using the TV. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about something else besides the Wii U. Yeah, no, 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 but no, there wasn't play, enough, there weren't enough games for the Wii U. Yeah. I want to play Devil's yeah. Advocate yeah. because it's just kind of because I'm a jerk. But how many of us still have our Wii U's plugged in and set up? Uh, oh yeah. wow! Oh yeah, me <laughs> nicely done. Really? Smash, I don't. smash yeah, you guys, I and yeah, Pokemon poke tournament. That's true. Those guys smash and the occasional. Yeah, that, uh, wow. <laughs> wow! Yeah, N- Nintendo know. Land is also we, one yeah. of the best party games ever. Mm-hmm. And I we interrupted stand by you. that to my grave. We interrupted you. I'm interrupting you right now. But uh, we interrupted you earlier. You were talking about software on the Switch and stuff. Yeah. And I just wanted you to finish that thought. Well, the other th- the thing about it is, I think that the thing that kind of panned out over the last year and a half is not only is Nintendo supporting this with some really amazing first party stuff and some really like frequent first party editions we have Super Mario Party Let's Go or Pokemon Let's Go and Super Mar- Smash Bros Ultimate all this year still and then I counted them up next year Metroid Prime 4 Luigi's Mansion 3 Yoshi's Crafted World Fire Emblem 3 Houses a new Animal Crossing and a new Pokemon game Hell of a lineup. are mm-hmm. all slated for 2019 mm-hmm. yeah. which is ludicrous to me yeah. like that's amazing support and, mm-hmm. but the thing that has sh- kind of panned out over the last year and a half is that Tons of indie developers yeah. and tons of so, third-party developers. And AAA third-party devs oh, are there. You know? into this That's system. what I was going to say. Like I, I'm totally on board with the idea of Nintendo having off years on their first-party support because on Wii U and, to, and on Wii, we only got first-party support, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with them having banger years in 2017 and 2019 and then in between being supplemented and supported by third-party and indie developers. Like I yeah. think that that's very, very smart, and I hope that that's their plan for the rest of the generation. Um, before we move on to the next topic, I did just want to read a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, comments here in the comment section. Lay it on so, me. Let me um, have it. I'm gonna get I like, torn apart. I know. I like so. boiler. I like boiler. Bro, Joe says. I also. I think we focus on criticisms for thing we things we love because we feel really invested in them becoming better. Which yeah, I think that's you'll totally agree fair. With. Man, I wish everyone had that ideology. Right. That is so <laughs> awesome that you have that. That like I we cr- we criticize the art we love and the things we love because we care about them and we yeah. want mm-hmm. them to be better, not We're, because I, we hate them. I in this review, I tear into the voice chat app right. because I think it is <gasps> I oh, think it's app. ludicrous cool. okay. right the, the app I think is just a, one of the silliest design decisions a console maker has ever made and Definitely. as you pointed out in your article about Fortnite there you, that's not necessary yeah. it's not necessary. Fortnite doesn't <laughs> use it and I I say that honestly because I I hope somebody I hope that that camel's back will eventually break right if we don't point those things out, it'll never change. And I hope that Nintendo eventually comes around on that. Well, despite your feelings on animal cruelty, uh, J.M. <laughs> Spat says, Tom Marks is a smart, energetic, and engaging young man. So congratulations, Tom. I haven't been, had an opportunity to read your review or check it out yet, but I am excited that you yeah. came on the show to talk you, to us about you it. You should. I think you're going to love the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I, I can't wait to check it out for my very first time. Uh, now, you mentioned a lot of 2019 games coming out. I did. Uh, a lot of... Big time hits, it sounds like, but uh, bangers. We've got say. a, we've got a twenty. I've already said bangers twice on the show, and I'm feeling very <laughs> self conscious about it. So well, we haven't said Dark Souls yet. Uh, that now we got a drink. <laughs> now, now we got it. Thanks a lot. Uh, one game that we didn't talk about coming out this year, coming out very soon. That is a Super Mario Party. Yeah. That's right. Now we each had an opportunity to go on with different versions of Super Mario Party. The mm-hmm. three of us played uh, Partner Party, mm-hmm. which is a new board game mode, and uh, the three of us played uh, Toad's Rec Room, which is that really cool dual screen mode. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about 
our impressions of Super Mario Party. That's the title of this game. Yes, it is. Super That's, Mario Party. Now, we've played a lot version. of Mario Parties, but yeah. this is our first Super, Super Mario, Mario Party. Party. <laughs> and uh, I will be the first to say, uh, that sure felt like Mario Party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, right down to, uh, so d- for, for context, uh, three of us plus Pear, and we put up the Let's Play. It's really fun. You should check it out. Yeah. It is um, a really good Let's Play. <laughs> we sat down for just a good old classic game of Mario Party where everyone thinks that they're doing well, Everyone thinks they understand the rules, and then the universe a- appears to haunt you and and screw with you and torture you. And so Zach and I were on the same team, and we're <laughs> fighting against Casey and Pear. And um, I think we are all sort of just like this is a. It's not a board game in the traditional sense. It's just this sort of like meandering giant flat maze that we kind of moved around, collected things. For the record, we didn't really know what we were picking up, what we were using. You get items, you get um, team mini games, all this other stuff. There's conveyor belts. There's a lot of kind of push and pull of where you are, where you're supposed to go. And in the middle of the board game is this Bobomb who is just getting bigger and bigger. He's like the one you kill at the end of the first level of Mario 64. And when he gets pissed off, he explodes and things go scattering everywhere. Um, What happened here was we took turns playing a bunch of minigames. Some are really fun. And some we won, some we lost. And by the end, Zach and I had three stars and 40 coins, which... I guess is good. And they had like 60 coins, but like no stars. We had like 98 coins. 98 coins. We were rich. And then, so the (laughs) game ends and then, you know, the gods of Mario Party appear to go, okay, great job, everyone. I know you think you know who won, but you don't. Guess what? Guess what? We got some news. Whoever got the most coins gets a star. And so, won the most mini games. And the most mini games. So they just start handing out stars to Team Casey and Pear. And Zach and I, who did all this hard work the whole the whole way there, just get nothing. And so they just dunk on us at the end in the last three seconds and they win the game and we just walk out pissed off. I, I'm, like, I'm not a competitive person. I don't <laughs> I don't necessarily really feel like I need to prove anything to anyone, but mm-hmm. uh I was legitimately pissed coming yeah. out of that what? room. Like I was really? like not at you guys, but just at the fact that like Brian and I had it in the back. Yeah. Like I we were talking so much like Yang on these guys, yep. like during the, the game itself. It was like, oh look at that. Who's in the lead? It's so, yes, it so to is. clarify, then, yeah, we, we were not we were yep. behind because we kept rolling terribly on our movement die so we're going like one or two squares mm-hmm. every turn while they are like picking up tons of girlfriends that gave them extra dice yeah, so and let them move so far so they were able to get to the stars before us all the time. By, by the end of the match Zach had like two pick pickaxes and I think a handgun and I <laughs> I had like F- every female character in Mario history, except and a, Rosalina, except for Rosalina and a Goomba following me everywhere, and I'm like, I'm just Luigi, and I'm like, this is a great day for him, and, and then we and then we lost, and I don't, I couldn't tell you what we did wrong besides getting enough money. Like yeah. we lost because we didn't have enough money. I don't know what kind of so message we, Nintendo sent. So yeah, I, is, I remember my first time playing Mario. What you, what you, yes. If you win all of the mini games, you will have more money than the other person, so that gives the mini game. Better the person who's better at mini games, not only the mini game star, but the coin star as well. Yeah, yeah that's so. a participation trophy. It's nonsense. <laughs> what? Yeah, <they're, laughs> we, we won out. because we were better at mini games than you. The only the only ones that those bonus stars that are like really like I'm not okay with are the ones where it's like you landed on the most red spaces. Oh, yeah. you get a so, star. Yeah, they tried to pull that on us, but none of us landed on any of those spaces no, the whole were, game. So there were stomp spaces and yeah. they were given to whoever stomped mm-hmm. on the most people and stomping is if you land on the same spot as someone else, you will stomp on them and steal their coins. Yeah. And I played with uh with Sam yesterday and some other people and we got completely destroyed by Brendan and Barrett because they kept stomping on us and taking our coins. They're, and we they're couldn't cheering. buy any stars. They're like cheering out there. Uh, the the interesting thing, I think <laughs> that like <laughs> Nintendo is sort of like, this is very tried and true classic Mario Party. Obviously, it's 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 prettier looking than ever. Um, you can't play this in handheld mode. You can only play uh, on the TV because mm-hmm. you're basically using all these motion controls for it. Except um, for the Toad's Rec Room <clears throat> stuff. We're, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and one I, of the mini games we're looking at right here is sort of a, a spinoff of the mini game that we in, saw in Mario Odyssey. In Mario Odyssey, where you have to create Mario's face using sort of shapes and stamps. Um, and this is this one's really fun. So Zach and I were playing as Mario and Luigi, and we basically have to yell at each other and say like, "Drop his eye down a little more, or drop his mouth up a little more," and it just sort of hovers a shadow over the face to see where you can put it. And somehow we won. 
won this, but no, I don't know. Tie. It was a tie. It was a tie. But yeah. we made a Mario that's just <laughs> horrible. If you're, if you're watching the video version, you see this like derpy looking Mario, and then the scores round up to ninety percent. Yeah, each. for both and of us, it was so sense. ridiculous. It looks yeah. like Mario stumbling out of a bar at like four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I will say like it's very classic Mario Party. The game took about forty five minutes to play yeah. one match. Mm -hmm. You know, they Which still have ten rounds. Yeah, yeah, just ten rounds. They haven't really made a, a like a fast sped up truncated version of that. Toad's right? Rec Room has like medium mini games, but right. real quick. Um, I just want to specify. So if you guys were watching the footage, that those maps were for the partner partner um, mode, right? Partner it's party mode, thing, right? Yeah, and so that has more of a grid type layout mm -hmm. where you can choose exactly where you want to go. Whereas the four like yeah. free for all has the it's traditional, like traditional board game, board right? Game right, right, right. Yeah, I think that. I I have very very fond memories of uh, burning holes in the palms of my hands playing <laughs> playing Mario Party one and two. That spinning one. Yeah. Well, Did you get those safety gloves in the mail from the recall? <gasps> I mean, is, is, is that a Party thing? Game. Oh yeah, no. They there was a number. There was like a, a thing you could write into, and they would mail you gloves to wear if you had hurt your hands. My brother <laughs> straight up had. It looked like sh so, like he stopped a bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad you guys are oh interjecting because I was just going to make a really terrible joke. But um, <laughs> moving on, I, I will say that that I, I've not been a huge Mario Party fan in the last. Last few years, I think the games have been okay. I, I, it's a lot. It feels like a lot of more of the same. And this game doesn't feel necessarily super different from that. But I am really excited because the mini games that are there are really, really fun. And yeah. they all and they all do different really stuff. Really well. And, and they work really well. Oh man! One thing this that one. we didn't uh, we didn't get a chance to play it here in this game, but uh, on this board. But my favorite one I got to play at Gamescom. I think I talked about this on a previous episode. But you you hold the Joy-Con like a like you're holding the the a uh, pan, like, oh. like a hot pan, yeah. and they drop a cube of meat, and you have to flip the cube six times and <laughs> brown it on each side, and whoever does it the fastest wins, and it's just, it was just the four of us, like, oh, look at this meat, mm -hmm. it was great, it's a super fun game, I, I'm, I'm excited for it, I think Toad's Rec Room is another really cool bonus, that's the dual screen <laughs> mode, we played um, the banana matching mini game, yep. which, uh, look, I am shocked at how the three of us especially don't know what a banana looks like. What? Yeah. The, f the amount of times that we had to spin those switches to make sure that those bananas matched up. Because it was like, you'd put two of the flat ends together, and it's like, oh, that's not a banana. Like, so let me, yeah. let me ask Shockingly you. Shockingly difficult. Let me ask you guys this, because from the second this was pitched to us, I think it was E3, right, where we yeah. first saw this game. Yeah, um, earlier this the year. The idea of taking multiple switches that were just the screens and then lining them up next to each other so that they could sort of communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how that magic is working. No, it's nobody like, does. And Nintendo like, magic. Is that what it is? The amount of customization that, that happens between those games, especially like the tank game, you can line those switches up so that they're just a fraction off and put one little line in between. So like your tanks in the tank game have to funnel through this one little zone and it... It's really, really interesting. It really changes the board every so single I, time. So I can spoil the magic if you want to know. Yeah, please do. Because it's kind of genius, yeah. actually. It has nothing to do with the position of the switches. There are no sensors. They don't detect each other. There's nothing like that. What you do is both of the games that use this, the tank game and the banana game, require you to swipe your finger from one switch to the other. Mm -hmm. And it reads those two inputs, knows exactly how they're positioned based on how your finger went from one switch to the other on the oh, touch screen. Oh, that's so smart. And from there, you can move the switches. So if you do the tank so game... They, act, they actually act independently as well. Yeah, they yeah, act yeah. completely independently. Mm -hmm. It just reads the touchscreen data from both of them. <laughs> yeah, here's us messing up a bunch of bananas it, if you're so, watching the video version. So the game, the game doesn't need to know that the switches are actually in the right position for the bananas as long as there is a swipe that is correct. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As long as the swipe goes from one banana to the next banana in the right order, <laughs> That's what I'm works. always saying. And so in the same way with the tank game, if you took the two things and you swiped to, to set up the, the two switches, it would like detect that that's how you want it. And then you could put the two switches in different rooms potentially or whatever the, the wireless sensor that is. That sounds like and it would cool. still work. interesting now, way to play those games. Yeah. Uh, Zach, I, I that's read, at least my understanding of it. I, I might be wrong about that, but that's how I pick your pick I read your preview out. and you said it was it was like not a hundred percent accurate, right? Like um, it's a little wonky at times. I, I think it sort of depends. In the heat of the moment during the banana matching game, I know that the banana game has an actual has an actual uh Name. Name. I can't remember it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in that game, I did notice a little bit of, like, detection error. Like, you, you had to swipe very deliberately. And, like, yeah. when you're really going for yeah. time... like And it, also, yeah. if you're trying to hold the system still, if mm -hmm. one of your fingers is accidentally on the screen, that can mess it up as well. And yeah. so this is a mode that most people who don't have access to multiple switches will never see in their lives, right? Uh, everything so, but the banana game. So the, yeah, oh. so everything but the banana game is playable with only one switch. Oh, That's wow. Right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can play... Yeah, you can play the other games. And there's, a, there's, a, there's two additional games... 
one we absolutely can't talk about, and one I don't think we can talk about, and I don't want to <laughs> check the embargo information. Okay, so, uh, play, let's play not. safe. Yeah. Um, I, I, on to some other Super Mario Party news, and this is a uh, this is a little bit of news of the weird. I really love this story. I, I like one of my favorite things about putting the show together every week is that there's it gives me the ability to talk about one weird Nintendo thing that happened. And this week, um, an eBay listing went up from someone that claimed to have found a working cartridge for Super Mario Party uh, sitting near an airport. Near an airport, I don't know what that on means. the street. Um, that eBay listing got eighty one bids and sold for. Anyone? Anyone? $7,100. $7,100. What? That game comes out in a week. Like, <laughs> why would you pay that? Crazy. What did he pay for shipping, though? <laughs> yeah, five ninety five. It's just an envelope. It's, yeah. what, what, it's think, like a two to three weeks shipping. I yeah. think you get free shipping at ten thousand. Is is how that works? Yeah. Uh, right. Hey, I will mail. Here, here's an image. It. This is from the eBay listing that that shows the cartridge. And then he also had a video of him. Uh, he had set up his phone to film him, like or her, I guess, presumably playing Super Mario Party and running it on his TV. So that it was legitimate, right? Yeah. Like banged up a little bit too. You yeah. Can see. Well, that's what happens works. when you drop it near an airport <laughs> <laughs> from the airplane. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you guys want, I I'm I'm selling copies of this game for seven thousand dollars each in two weeks. So just hit me up. <laughs> I'll mail them to you. I, I love this story. I think it's totally bizarre, and it it just it kind of talks to just how crazy Nintendo fans are. Can I can I like ask you we're all something? Nintendo fans on this panel? I would never pay no seven thousand dollars for <laughs> a. a, a Advanced well, copy of Super Mario Party. Well, that's the thing. The end of your sentence right there is the most operative part because I think Breath of the Wild, two weeks before it came out, I think a couple of us would have been, we would have had a conversation. I like, would have thrown like, you two, wanna, you wanna like chip 200 in? bills <laughs> yeah. at it, but like not 7,000. You, you and me and 10 or other people would have been like, let's do the math on this one. Let's yeah. chip in. Everybody put in 50 bucks. Everyone in the this. office. I got five on it. And we'd, be, we'd take Breath of the Wild, we'd start filming it and stuff like that. Mario Party, that's kind of a known quantity. Like, I think I know what's going on. I mean, maybe the banana thing, but even then we couldn't play that game until we found two copies by the airport. That's right. Well, maybe they did chip in because it's Mario Party, so maybe four people went in. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you guys this. Have, have, have any of you ever found a video game? Like, in the Just wild? like uh, on the street? Yeah. I found a PlayStation 2 in a bunch of games, but that was in like... 2010. Oh my god! I, yeah, I used to find games in like pre, not preschool, but in like aftercare and like right. after uh -huh. school, like never like where games wouldn't normally be. Mm -hmm. Like kids leave their stuff all over the place. Right. So like that was normal to find a Pokemon Blue cartridge in the train set. That's a come up. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, I found the like Nintendo DS version of like the Wolverine Origins movie video game just like on a street somewhere. I was walking down the street and I'm like. That's a DS game. And I picked it up and I was like, that's not a good DS game. Aww. Did you put it back? Yeah. <laughs> the console version of that Wolverine Origins game was actually pretty fun. It was, yeah. It was kind of God of War, but mm -hmm. the DS version I never played. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just wild and crazy, A, that, you know, we've seen this kind of stuff happen before where like Dr. iPhone leaves his uh, prototype iPhone in a yep. bar and then it gets picked up and people are like, damn. This is crazy. Doctor I. Yeah, Doc, that's the man who creates yeah. the iPhone. Or, um, or like literally every Assassin's Creed game is a guy in an iPad <laughs> Pro being like, I am working on the new Assassin's Creed game. And then four gamers sitting in the row behind oh him. He's no. like, it's in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just on the train just shouting it. I'm working on Assassin's Creed. Like, I <laughs> hope no one sees this. You could be a bird in the game. I mean, yeah. people do that stuff. I've been on the train with a dude reading out his credit card information on the phone before. That's <laughs> so. just wild. People, I, people would do crazy like, things. Did you write it down? We could buy Mario Party. <laughs> and I'm worried about like writing stuff in like 10 font on a, <laughs> like my Google Drives. Like someone's going to read this behind yep. my shoulder. Yeah. Yep. Like <laughs> in, so in closing, so funny. In closing, uh, please be prepared to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey on your Nintendo Switch on October 5th, streaming only in Japan. <laughs> um, one thing that we would be remiss if we didn't talk about this week. Uh, we have to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah maybe man. We're going to get into it. We're going to get weird. Uh, hey, before Zach got to it, this entire run of show was just this just topic. Just all this okay. topic. It was topics one through six. Bowsette, Bowsette, Bowsette. Here Bowsette, we are. Bowsette. So I've titled this segment of the show uh, a headline that we took from one of oh, our writers man. here. The producers are shaking their heads at uh, us. That's okay. We're just going to get weird. Uh, who the hell is Bowsette and why does the internet love them? Okay. Um, so... I would like to frame this conversation a little bit about uh, 
what makes fan art important to fan culture mm -hmm. and what makes something mimetic? Like what is the genesis of a meme and how does that get adopted so quickly? And then also subsequently fall off so fast. Mm -hmm. Chances are we're probably not going to talk about any of that. And this will probably just be a very horny topic, but I want to talk about <laughs> Bowhead. Mean, mm -hmm. Brian specifically, yeah, why you seem to have a problem with this. No, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just like, why are you throwing to me specifically to tell you about Bowhead? Well, you went to art school. So <laughs> I help did go us to out. art school. Yeah. Um, so I think what, what has happened here is obviously people have latched on to something and made what I would deem a very randy or impure version of something that is historically known as pure. And by doing hey, this, this is our okay, last okay, live wait, show. Yeah. we could say horny. That's fine. Let okay, me, fine. That's fine. Okay. Let me preface this by how this came about. Yeah, okay. Please yes, do. Please. Okay. So there's an artist on Twitter um, at AYYK92, AKA. Haniwa, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, my bad. I've only read it before. But she drew a little comic strip that depicts uh, Peach in a wedding outfit uh, denying both Bowser and Mario. From the end of Odyssey. Yes. Spoilers, sorry. And yeah. so Bowser and Mario <laughs> are sad, but then they find the super crown, which they showed off in the new Super Mario Bros. Um, you version coming to Wii that mm -hmm. when Toadette puts it on, here's it turns a, here's her... Here's a cartoon that our live producers put <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah. It, no, this is the, this is yeah, the original no, this comic. Is yeah. and, um, I don't like how Mario doesn't have eyes. So it that. turns Toadette into Peachette. So Bowser puts it on and, and he becomes, becomes Bowsette. Which, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the way that the names are put together doesn't make any sense and it's wrong. Like right, right. It should be like Peacher or mm -hmm. Peacha for like King yeah. Koopa. Mm -hmm. But yeah. whatever, it's fine. Bowser sounds better anyway. And so he becomes a version of Peach with a black dress and like uh, armbands and a choker with like studs and horns. And it it's a monster girl. And monster girls are popular, especially in Japan, for reasons. Yes, for sex and, stuff. But I think... Honestly, I think the comic the original comic strip is really funny. It's and great. There are a lot of wholesome comic strips that have come out as well, mm -hmm. like with Bowser talking to Bowser Jr., like making him feel like he has a mother figure and then going off to go find Bowser instead. Right. And just, I don't know, I think it's cute. And basically, a lot of people saw this, loved the idea, started producing a ton of fan art, and everyone just started making a ton of Bowser fan art. I yeah, love and I and think it, one of the reasons like people are specifically locking into something like this is because it's using characters established uh, in a sort of like E for all ages world, mm -hmm. and it's using canonical items, uh, <laughs> rules set by the creator of said characters, right? Nintendo is like, you can become a peach if you get this crown, even though yeah. if you're a toad. Um, weird week for toad, by the way. <laughs> and uh, oh, no. and it's taking all of those things and it's combining them and then turning them into something that's sort of nefarious in some ways, but also that you know, in a very slight way, is annoying the people that run the social media for Nintendo. <laughs> and yeah, so that's so, bad. so like a big part of a meme is that there's a, there's a 4% of it that is actively bothering somebody, not pissing them off, not hurting them, but like a mosquito in one's ear. Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of like, you know that like their Nintendo's like, hey guys, we got some great new games coming out. And everyone's like, that's great. I want to see Toad in a diaper. And they're right. like, why? But why? <laughs> why are you doing that to us? And so this will... This might die down, uh, die, die, uh, die down, or it might not, because if you look at something like Isabel in Animal Crossing, like that, that kind of took a life of its own too, where they they made her. I've so seen some fan art of Isabel that like makes me really upset. Right, so but like, they also a lot of help. Nintendo fan art in general that upsets uh, me greatly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're a Sonic fan, this is nothing new. <laughs> There's actually a comic <laughs> specifically world, about that. It's Mario and Bowser looking at a computer, getting upset, and Sonic comes over. It's like you haven't seen anything. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like the Bowser. Uh, phenomenon. I think it's just cool, and yep. a lot of cool communities have taken taken it over and made it their own. The one thing that I'm sort of most fascinated by, and the reason it's really like a hilarious Bowsette as a character is so funny but cool to me, is I think the Super Crown is the first time in Mario canon or lore that there's an item that turns a like individual character into another individual character. Right, right. Mario transforms into things, but this is the first time that Toadette, a named person, has turned into Peach, a different human being. Right, all, all together. Right. Yeah, I mean, we are so, we are decades deep in the lore here, 
And none of this makes sense. <laughs> right, but like, it's Like, so this, about, this is about, like, an Italian guy that's, like, cleaning toilets and falls in, I think, and then shows up in a magical land where if he eats mushrooms, which, canonically, if you read the original instruction manual, are the dead souls of toads or trapped souls of toads. What? That's absolutely yeah, they, true. That's no, 100% breaking, true. No, breaking the blocks. Yeah. That's, like, there's toads trapped inside those blocks. <laughs> and then he eats a mushroom, and then he gets large and can shoot fire and stuff like that. None of it makes sense. But we're at a point now where it's, like, if you eat this certain thing, you become an adult woman, and it's, yeah. like, we're losing <laughs> the thread here but I, other people have picked up the super crown stuff too you see yep. pokemon turned right. into peach i i saw on the rainbow six siege subreddit there's a character named thermite and people have made thermet mm-hmm. it, it, it has just gone the, out and the so memes, it's awesome it's, it's just awesome. been memeception at this point like right. they so there's also like chompet and yeah. buet right and they're and great they, and they got chompet someone put chompet buet and Bowsette uh-huh. as the big three in a comic panel from my hero academia which yeah. is like a new like three characters that was introduced in that anime and it's just becoming ridiculous it's right. all over the place i kind of so like it what, so, i love the it thing, <laughs> the, <laughs> thing that, the thing that I, i'm getting a lot of comments in the uh ign chat that are like wow it must be a slow news week if you guys are talking about Bowser. <laughs> it is trending but it's trending think, on japanese twitter that is big and like, i think that, it's, that i think that it's important to talk about things that capture the cultural zeitgeist yes. in this way right because like like Casey said, there are so many people creating different variations of this, and the meme has so far extended past the idea of like, oh, what if Bowser was a girl? Like, it's it's really, really cool to see all these different interpretations, and more mm-hmm. importantly than that, it's so awesome that all these artists that you wouldn't know yeah. get to flex a little muscle and mm-hmm. show like, hey, I drew this, and it's awesome. Like, the chompette that you yeah. mentioned is like my favorite one, because yeah. that looks straight out of like, almost like um, Mega Man Legends or yeah. something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, all these different styles, all these different interpretations. It's it's really cool, and it's only happening right now. Right. And in a year from now, Brian and I were talking about this at lunch, we'll be on this panel again and be like, huh, remember when Bowsette was a thing? You yeah, I mean, that cool that's, art? that's like, the thing, right? It yeah. could go either way. People could latch onto it. But the, the reason specifically to add an extra layer to this, that this is really interesting, is that this is the year Nintendo is launching fan service the game in mm. December. Yeah. Like this December, sorry for touching <laughs> your water. In, De- in December, they're, they're going to be like, hey, you love all those favorite things from your history of being a Nintendo fan? Here they are. And everyone's like, what about Luigi? We made him a meme. Force Like, let's force meme him into this game. And so between that and like Diaper Toad from earlier in the year and, and Bowsette, like this stuff is crossing the line between like, this is part of the lore, this is part of the history, and now we demand it in Smash. And so this is, we're weeks or days or seconds away from people, look, um, this was uh, this was, this was was done by Ghana Chris. Mm-hmm. She made a custom amiibo, which is like, you know, she she knows how to jump right in at right the mo- at just timeline. the perfect no- moment. And she's a fantastic artist, so, you by the way. You have some custom amiibo from I do. Well. She made me a uh, the T-Rex, the T-Rex wearing, from Mario yeah, Odyssey with so Mario cool. with the mustache and, and everything. Before we move on, which we have to, I, I will say, I, I apologize if you've seen your art in this episode of NVC and we haven't given you the credit uh, here. I, I completely meant to write it down and have it pop up on screen at the same time, but I'll make sure to do that in the uh, the YouTube uh, uploads and in the article itself. Apologies on that. Uh, artists should get their credit where mm-hmm. it's due. Um, moving on, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about Dragalia Lost. Yes. Um, Dragalia Lost is a mobile game that we've been hearing about for several months, and I know, Casey, you were on the show a while back talking mm-hmm. about how Dragalia Lost would probably ruin your life because yeah. it is a collection of gotcha uh-huh. and uh, dragons, your two favorite things. <laughs> so please, you guys have had an opportunity to play this this morning when it went live. I've not played it yet. Brian, have you played it yet? No, I tried to last night, but they were like, the servers aren't ready, and Aww. it just kicked me into this loop of showing The dragons me. ain't there. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> eggs are still on <laughs> the, Ooh, my eggs are hatching. Casey. So, yeah, Dragalia Lost is something that I actually came over to Tom's S to talk about just to kind of get my thoughts cleared when I got hands-on for the preview. And did that encourage you to get the game, just oh, yeah, talking yeah. to you about you, it? You and me talking about it definitely made me install it today Yeah, uh, when I saw that it was live. And I thought it was really cool. Yeah, I think it's really interesting as well. You usually don't see mobile games with this much effort into the story and lore. Yeah. Like, usually they just throw you into levels and you have characters which are basically just a list of stats with nothing, no characterization. But this, you have a story mode, you have animated characters, you have voice acting, and there are more than 60 characters that you can summon in like that gotcha style uh, mobile gaming kind of thing that happens in all mobile games. Timeout. Yes. Real quick. Uh-huh. 
Give me the TLDR of gotcha style games for anybody that's oh, listening that doesn't okay. know. Okay, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes is a gotcha style game where Perfect. you add more characters to your roster by using premium currency to summon them, and it is a random lottery style system. So you could get a character that is really bad, that is super useless, or you get a character that is amazing that you almost need to progress. Like in Fire Emblem Heroes, my first draw was, uh, I think his name is Takumi. He's an archer who was like the best guy in the game and I just got really lucky and was able to steamroll through the entire game. Oh wow. Yeah. And so this is this just launched on iOS. It's not an Android and yet. I think I thought it was on Android okay. as well. Um Ooh. and it's free to play. It is free yeah. to play. Free to start or whatever. And because so many people signed up for it uh, beforehand, they give you so much premium currency at the start that you're able to get almost 20 characters oh, drawn cool. from the summoning it immediately. Mm. But there's one thing, they're not all characters. So you summon characters dragons and items and they all come from the same summoning ritual so you can summon 10 things and they if you're unlucky they could all be items mm. um i got really lucky and got a bunch of really good stuff and it works really well and it's really fun to play so far yeah it's like a little uh almost diablo style oh, cool. dungeon yeah. crawly action game yeah it reminds me a little bit of pokemon quest but if it had more engaged mm -hmm. combat if it mm -hmm. was a little bit more hands-on a little bit uh sharper so this is Nintendo's first mobile game that's not based on a pre-existing IP. Yeah. yeah. I did not see something like this coming at all. It mm -hmm. does not seem Nintendo-y either. It yeah. looks more Final Fantasy. Yeah, so it was made by Psy yeah. Games, which is which are famous for making these anime style mobile games. Right. That it looks they, like a Psy Games yeah. game. Yeah. And they a lot of their games end up having anime spin-offs mm -hmm. cool. from uh, inspired by the game. So I kind of hope we get an anime from this because the story and lore is actually very interesting. Basically, you're a prince in the kingdom of Alberia. And you are seventh in line for the throne, and you go through a ritual to become pacted to a dragon to help the kingdom restore. If you're the seventh I'm in line, I'm sorry. You, if you're the seventh it in line, even are you even a prince? It doesn't like, even I think matter. That just means that you're just a guy that lives See, he, in the castle. That's why he didn't bother getting a pact with a dragon because he just didn't want to create that conflict with his siblings. But right. his, his kid, like, there's a lot of story in this game. Okay, <laughs> um, so. Anyway, it's just uh, there's a repeat of history where uh, people become too invested in tech, start disrespecting nature, the dragons get mad, war starts, people summon an evil entity, and then the dragons and the people have to join forces together to destroy the dark demon that they keep summoning. Sounds like some summoning. classic escapism and, from the world we're in right now. And <laughs> this... This... Uh, <laughs> this... Um, this repeats. History repeats itself in this world. And we're basically on the cusp of a catalyst of that happening again. Okay. Uh, but it's really interesting. I'll be the first to admit, um, I have sort of jumped on. I've been an early adopter to a lot of these uh, Nintendo mobile games. You know, mm -hmm. Super Mario Run, Fire Emblem, uh, and likely this as well. But then I also drop off just as fast. Like it's mm -hmm. It's like a week or two out of my life where I'm like, this is great. I'm going to play this forever. And then... I do not play that forever. What is it about this game that like instills any sort of feeling of longevity or like besides dragons? I know you love dragons. Is there <laughs> anything else that this game's got going for it that you think might actually help to alleviate that kind of like hop on, hop off sort I, of mentality? I don't know about Casey. Honestly, I don't know if it will break that for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a huge mobile phone gamer. This felt like a very f like fun game in what I've played so far, which is I think a big thing in making me want to go through this story at least. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is the type of game that I sink a few hours into and then sort of move away from. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's a bad game. I just am not I, like I, I'm similar to you and I don't know if this will fully break me out of that cycle. Does this mm -hmm. game constantly check to see if you're online? Um I don't so you no. pre so I in the preview. I hope somebody gifts that. We're all just looking at each other. Like, what is so in the preview, um, the Nintendo representatives told me that you do have to be online to play. Mm -hmm. That honestly makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, yeah but you they, also can pre-download the chapters. Oh, oh you, cool. So that's cool. Because that kind of like that's what screws with my commute. I'm I'm in the same way, the same boat as Zach. Where like I tried to play these games more and more. Although um, Animal Crossing, I got pretty hooked on, and Mario Run, I pretty much hundred percented. Yeah, but, your 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 pocket camp was lit. Yeah, that's true. But my uh. My commute is mostly underground on a yeah. train, and I just can't check in. I'd, I'd love to play these games more there, but it won't let me. I'd I say think you have to do all of the unlocking and summoning stuff online yeah. because that's all tied to your account yeah. and the server and all that jazz. But 
yeah, every time you start a new chapter, it makes you download it. It's mm -hmm. like two to three megabytes yeah. that you have to click a button and it downloads it really quick. Yeah. So I, I was told there's a way yeah. to download everything in advance. Oh, cool. So, yeah. And also this game is also co-op, which is really interesting. And I that, think wow. that might keep me more invested for a longer time if I can get one of my friends that I usually play video games with to get this game, I might play more. Mm -hmm. So we actually so. have a question here mm -hmm. online. Uh, <laughs> Username uh, asks, Casey, does this game have a daily login slash chore-like feeling to it, or do you feel the kind of story that has a timeless feeling? So this game Those are sort of unrelated, but... Yeah. So this game literally just came out today. Mm -hmm. I know that there are daily... Uh, task to do that get you bonuses, but you could just play through the story, and that's one of the things I really like about this game is that the st it is very story heavy. Mm -hmm. You are unlocking characters through the story, and also the characters and dragons that you summon through the summoning mechanic have their own stories as well uh -huh. that you can unlock by, by playing with them, which is really interesting to me. So there's a lot of story about it that it kind of won't have to feel like a grind unless that's the style that you want to play it as. Mm. Uh, it very I appreciate it, that. It very much felt like a like if you've played any sort of free to play mm -hmm. game with premium currency on mobile before, you will know what this looks like. Um, I am really curious. Do you know if there's any sort of energy mechanic that like stops you from doing a certain number of chapters? That I haven't noticed yet. Okay, because that's so, one of the things that turned me off of Pokemon Quest. Yeah, was that was really obnoxious that I couldn't <laughs> just play the game. Yeah. Right, uh, Casey. I, I did want to talk to about your last point about like all the different like variations and dragons and stuff. Casey Defridis, one thing you should know about her is that she just freaking loves dragons so much <laughs> to the extent that like she's playing this game and came over to my desk and was like, "Look, this dragon looks like a real woman today." And I was like, "That's very good, Casey." No. <laughs> I, was like, I was weirded out by it. Okay, like so I did a summoning ritual where you can summon ten things at a time, and so you can, like I said, you can summon you summon characters and dragons and items at the same time. So I get this one lady. And I couldn't tell if it was a character or a dragon. And I was like, I just didn't know. So you have to go into her details, and then it says that she is a dragon. Her name is Phoenix, and she has some voice acting. And it says, Won't you try? I don't know. It's something weird. It's something very flirtatious, and mm. she's a dragon, and it was strange. And I just showed it to Zach because I was weirded out. Like I showed it to Andrew Goldfarb earlier today. Mm. Andrew her Goldfarb is, was probably like, Yay! Her name is Phoenix. And she's a very strong dragon, and she is the strongest dragon I have now. Wait, she's just in a, case you need more fan art, right? <laughs> she's a dragon named Phoenix that looks like a human. It looks like as if you made Phoenix into a humanoid person. Like if someone was going to cosplay a sexy Phoenix, that is that dragon. I just, I'm sorry that I brought this up. <laughs> Anime. Look, uh, Casey, Phoenix. Not, not only do you love dragons, but you love all kinds of monsters, especially pocket monsters. <laughs> I do. And uh, are you ready to talk about this? By the way, I'm, is it is I'm, it cool? Okay. I, I'm pretty sure it's cool. If you've seen Casey it's texting totally cool. throughout the course of this episode, it's because she's checking on this this next story, which is a hot scoop. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's going on with Pokemon Let's Go. Yes. You came to me earlier today, and you're talking about how up until now we've seen that Pokemon Let's Go is only to be played with motion controls. Mm -hmm. But you've actually done some digging, and you've uh, just called upon that uh, investigative journalism background <laughs> and really done some Watergate-style work here to find out what. Talk to us about Okay, so... Too much Watergate. Oh, man, no. Brian, did no. it. You did. You no. said it. <laughs> I, okay, I deserve that. <laughs> um, up until this point, it has been reiterated multiple times by the Pokemon Company, by Nintendo, by representatives, by Junichi Masuda himself, who's the director of Game Freak, who is directing this game, that, that motion controls will be mandatory in handheld and docked mode. No matter what, you have to use motion controls. And this is something I have asked repeatedly. However, I clarified why I was asking, and it's because we we were asking because uh, people with limited mobility can't play with motion controls. So we told them that's why we were asking, and they finally did a little bit of digging, and they told us you can play Pokemon Let's Go in handheld mode without motion controls. You don't do not need to use motion controls. But However, yeah, there's a caveat before uh, you start. There clapping. is yeah. a big caveat. So we were able, Andrew Goldfarb and I were able to see a video of someone playing Pokemon Let's Go um, in handheld mode without using motion controls uh, by using the A button to throw the Pokeball and by using the left joystick to move the camera. Uh, so when you go into a capture, um, the kind of encounter, the Pokemon's already centered like in the crosshairs of your Pokeball. You don't actually have to move anything around, you can just throw the Pokeball at it. However, they were showing this to us with it flat on the table, mm -hmm. just pressing the buttons and just moving the joystick. They said there is no way to turn off motion controls entirely. Weird. 
So they did not clarify specifically if you picked up the system, if it would activate the con motion controls. Which is what but, we are kind of guessing will happen, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes, you can play without motion controls, but mostly it's just that they aren't necessary. But watching this makes me realize that most controls will not have as big of a part in handheld mode as I thought it was because the way it was explained previously was that you will have to physically move the console with the Joy-Cons attached around 360 trying- A la Pokemon Let's Go. Right. Yeah, or exactly. Or Pokemon Go, Yeah, sorry. like trying yeah. to find the Pokemon in the field. Which is, doesn't really work with your commute or the exactly. plane or anything. But that's not how it works. You go into the encounter and it is centered in your screen. Okay. And if you just press the A button, you can catch it. Mm -hmm. So- So that- it's very different. Sounds but good. It is good. It's just that <laughs> if you move the Question system, mark? if you move the system, it seems so far that if you move the system, that will it still move. Oh, so it's so you. But can if you, you don't touch the system, there will it won't move. So does that sound like the same as Breath of the Wild's like bow aiming? Or it sounds yes, similar you to that, can right? But you can turn stick. that you can just off. use a joystick. Right, yes. you can turn yeah. off the motion controls So there. that's the difference. It, it would be like using Breath of the Wild with most controls on, but trying to just use the joystick. Gotcha. You Which wouldn't be impossible, exactly. but it would be a little annoying. Exactly. So could you use like a slight combination of both? Because you could do that in Breath of the Wild, and that felt pretty cool. You yeah. could kind of fine yeah. both. Was yeah, nice. I was going to say you could finesse yeah. with the motion controls, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you can. Okay. It's just mm -hmm. not ideal. Like but ideally, you can't, you can't not do that. What? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. You're no, absolutely right. Basically what I'm saying, if you don't touch your Switch, if you don't move the Switch, you don't need to to be able to catch Pokemon. Okay. If so it's in handheld mode. Don't play during takeoff. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So that's that's the workaround. Unfortunately, you, as far as they've told us so far, you can't turn the motion controls off. So that could possibly interfere with your joystick aiming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's It's a lot better than what it sounded like before. Right. So it's still not perfect. Perfect. Well, and I, yeah. I, I just wanted to. I'm glad that we built this in the show, and I also wanted to give you specifically props for asking these questions. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting. Like, not a lot of people are talking about that specific yeah. functionality. And uh, I think you said that this was sort of in collaboration with one of our writers that was talking about accessibility. Yeah. So yeah. And so, like, that's a huge topic that mm -hmm. needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, like, not everybody can play games the way that this game is engineered to be played. So mm -hmm. if people are really huge Pokemon fans and want to be able to play the game but don't necessarily have 100% mobility, like, this is really important. Mm -hmm. Right. I think video games in general right now are starting to strive to make a better, like, kind of a attempt to help, you know, be more inclusive with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Look at Microsoft just, un you know, released that brand new controller. Yeah, the adaptive mm -hmm. controller. It's completely yeah. adaptive, and it's, you know, you're already seeing the results, and people are really enjoying it. Um, and so... Yeah, I, I hope Nintendo can find a way yeah. to make everybody enjoy this game. I, I hope that they add the capability to turn off most controls when in handheld mode, and that would just fix it for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. But otherwise, you can just not touch your Switch, and then it doesn't move. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just stay perfectly still. Yeah. Interesting stuff. That's how I play games, usually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Out just moving an inch. Totally mm -hmm. frozen solid. It's, it's really interesting, and I'm really glad that you brought this to our attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Casey. Now, we are running a little bit long, but it's our last live episode, so I don't care. Yep. And that means that it's time to play a little game that I like to call the question block. By the way, there's a new Pokemon. It's called Meltan. You can look up our article about it. This is my favorite thing that you do, Melton. by the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, question block. These questions are coming from facebook.com slash group slash NVC forums. You can also get at us uh, at the uh, email nvc at ign.com and at our Twitter handle at NVC podcast. We pick questions from all around uh, those three platforms. I specifically have been favoring the Facebook group lately because there's a lot of great questions coming from the Facebook group. And it's very active. Just like Joseph Dubay's question, how do you feel about the Castlevania collection not coming to Switch? And I am so angry about this. Yeah. It's fine. I'm fine. Okay. I... I understand why, mm -hmm. because Sony is handling those basically retrofits, right? Yeah. So they're going to put it on Sony platforms. Yeah. Well, they're assisting in the production of right. this of this remake in the same way Nintendo assisted with Bayonetta, right? Um, and so if you owned a PlayStation and you wanted to play Bayonetta 2 and you couldn't, and you got mad about that, <laughs> then you can't get mad about this for the opposite reason, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, I say... Let let them have it. I own a PS4, so let me have it too. Yeah. Um, but uh, Nintendo should step in and help bring all of the fantastic 
Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS Castlevania games to Nintendo Switch. And I'm talking Ooh, about yo. Area of Sorrow, Symphony I'm talking about Circle of the Moon, <laughs> yeah. uh, Portrait of Rune. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, Don, Harmony of Dissonance. Harmony of Dissonance is great. Um, what's the Dawn, third? Of Sorrow, Dawn of Sorrow. Dawn of Sorrow. That's the yeah. DS one. Yeah. 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 There's a bunch of great ones. There's three on GBA and two on DS, I believe. That uh, the GBA ones were ported to Wii U, mm -hmm. um, where you probably missed them because they came kind of late in the virtual console's life cycle. So, which was super important for Circle of the Moon yep. because Circle of the Moon was a first gen uh, GBA game that was so, so dark, especially yeah. on a screen that wasn't <laughs> backlit, that it was a huge like issue when it came to actually playing that game. It was very hard to see. And the, so bringing it to the Wii was really important. Or, yep. I'm sorry, did you say Wii U? The Wii U, yeah. yeah and so really the story important. behind that was apparently Konami had dev kits that were backlit mm -hmm. or basically just <laughs> didn't have final builds of what the GBA was. And then when we got it, it was pitch black and you had to play under a worm light or whatever it was. Um, so great. Let, let them have those games over on PlayStation. Bring that collection over to Switch. I think they'd mm -hmm. be fantastic there. I don't know how you do the dual screen thing, but I don't make games, so... Just head on out and figure it out, boys. They moved we'll Monster Hunter Stories onto iOS. There it no is. No problems. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I agree with everything you're saying. I will add, though, it does sting a little bit that yeah. this isn't coming to Switch when Simon is getting added to Smash. So at the same Symphony, time. Of the Night, yeah. Symphony of the Night is a game that I have been begging for on Switch. It's one of my all time favorite games. It's one of the best uh, 2D platformers of all time. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it basically invented the term Metroidvania. Um, it's an RPG. It's a Metroid game. It's a it, it's amazing. If you haven't played it, play it. Um, I'm still super super bummed that it's not coming to Switch. And I'd like the, although I said I understand why right. at, at the head of the show, I would love for this to be well. The case. So Ryan, the, you're very level headed about this, and it's you. very <laughs> res respectable. Not me. I'm very angry. logical. Castlevania. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you one more step into level headedness um, to celebrate Simon Belmont's inclusion on in Smash Brothers. Nintendo will give us the original Castlevania on NES <laughs> and you'll like it. Yeah. That's it. That's all. That's all you get. Our next question comes from Ramon Sanchez. He says, with uh, PS4 allowing crossplay, can the console wars finally begin? Fortnite, uh, Fortnite could have an actual console wars mode where 50 Nintendo Switch versus 50 PS4 or 50 Xbox people, etc. I think that would be epic. People will really defend their console and I'd fight for Nintendo every day. Mm -hmm. Um... That yeah, sounds that's really interesting. cool. It does sound I like really cool. It. Um, I also think that I've been told that playing Fortnite and Nintendo Switch is easy mode, so I don't have any confidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, people say that because there are a lot of noobs there when the game launched on. So maybe Switch. it's not the, the case so yeah. anymore. Um, but the uh, what's it called? Uh, Ramon is on is onto something here because this this fall will be the first time we will see bundles across all three platforms that all come with the same pack in game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is. Kind of, it's it's insane. So yes, that is literally a console war because at some point, all three of these things will be on the shelves. They'll all sort of be on an even playing field. They'll all come with Fortnite and V-Bucks and some exclusive backpacks or... $10 worth of V-Bucks. as I learned on the previous episode. That's true. Uh, all of this conversation, Ramon's question, all stems from the fact, in case you missed the news, that Sony finally, finally relented and opened up their platform to cross-platform play this week, mm -hmm. um, which is a... An important thing for a number of reasons. A, for the fact that Sony is willing to build this infrastructure to make this happen. Yep. But B, it also says a lot about Fortnite in an article that Tom wrote very smartly, um, basically saying that Fortnite is so popular and so powerful that it can bully Sony and Nintendo. At this point. <laughs> it can do what it wants, yeah. right? Everyone will bend over backwards to get Fortnite, make Fortnite happy and get them to be on their box for right. their console. Also, mm -hmm. you can get a dragon glider in Fortnite now, so yeah, that's that pretty, is pretty cool. cool. Are you, you, <laughs> you like dragons? dragons? That's cool. is that, <laughs> oh, I hate that. We, we talked about it literally earlier They're in right. the show of the, the voice chat. Fortnite, Nintendo was like, everybody has to use our voice chat app. And then Fortnite's like, Nah. Nah. No, we don't. We, yeah. No, we don't. And they're yeah. like, everyone but Fortnite has to use our voice <laughs> chat app. Uh, it, it opens the question to something like Rocket League, obviously, which is huge on yeah. Switch. Right. Um, and, and huge on PlayStation And 4, huge on and PlayStation, huge on and they're, they're still and, not communicating there yet. Right. This so, stuff is almost like this idea is... Steps. I, I actually I hate the term console wars, and I hate all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, I kind of love this idea. It's almost like a Splatfest but mm -hmm. between consoles, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody lay their, put their flag in the ground and fight for their yep. thing. I, I think that'd be really cool across a lot of different games. I, we lost. You my, heard it here first. My great grandfather in the console wars. So I'm <laughs> about them. Well, on that sad note, I have to bring the show to a close. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry to hear about your grandfather in the great console. That's the thing I made up right now. Uh, <laughs> 
Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Casey. Of course. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, we are Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo show, weekly at 3 p.m. on Thursdays. Uh, not live next week, not live for any of the foreseeable weeks. We will talk about maybe doing live episodes around big things like Nintendo Directs or mm -hmm. you know something like that, E3, of course. But um, the live format we experimented with, that's done now. We're going to go back to VOD on Thursdays, 3 p.m. on IGN, and Fridays, 3 p.m. on YouTube. Guys, thanks again for watching. Stick around uh, until next week. Stick around until next week. That's a stupid or not. way to say Just, that. You can yeah. go away come, and come back, back next week. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't move. Keep yeah, listening order until food. next week. <laughs> <laughs> come back next week. We have plenty more Nintendo news. And don't forget that this is the only place where you can get the thing. Get it.